Our last time of savoring for this morning is savoring the best gift that God has ever given. That is Christ our Lord. And so I would invite you to listen to the words of 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6 to 15. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your hearts to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Now, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you... That it? Oh, there we go. <laughs> You can be generous on every occasion, and through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that your accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ, and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing God, grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. The word of the Lord. It may seem a little bit odd <clears throat> that really the only part that directly talks about Jesus in this passage is that last little part. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. But the reality is, is that our gratitude for God's gift in Jesus Christ is the motivation for doing all of the good things that we are called to do. The Heidelberg Catechism uh, talks about how uh, the, the law of God, obedience to the law of God, it fits in the category of gratitude. It doesn't fit in the category of human misery, but instead it is in gratitude. I've been asked on occasion before to preach sermons on tithing, for example. This idea that you ought to give 10% of your income to the church. That's not what we're here for this morning. This is not a tithing sermon. The problem with the tithing sermon is that it is way too limited. Not saying that you should give more than 10% to the church per se. That's not the point. The point is, is that in the Old Testament, there were many, many different types of author, offering, including the tithe. And in the New Testament, Christ says to us that gratitude leads to self-sacrificing giving. And not just financial giving, but giving of your time and your ability, your talents, your care, your concern, your listening ear, all of those things. Doing, in other words, the good works that God has prepared for you to do. Remember that Jesus praises the woman who comes and gives her last two half pennies into the offering and says that she has given more than anybody else who has come through, even the wealthy and the powerful. Why? Because she has given everything she has. And remember the rich young ruler who comes to Jesus and Jesus says to him, you've got to obey the law because he says, 
what do I do to inherit eternal life? He says, you've got to obey the law. And the guy says, I've done all that. I've obeyed the law my whole life. And Jesus said to him, this you lack. Go and sell everything you have. Give it to the poor and come follow me. And the rich young man goes away sad because he's very wealthy. Or look at Matthew, the tax collector, who was among the despised people of his day. How when Jesus calls him to follow, Matthew does so. But not only does he do that, he also pays back all that he owes to those from whom he has taken more tax money than he should have. And not only does he pay it back, he pays back double what they should have what they should have returned to them. Brothers and sisters, why? Why that kind of generosity? Because of Jesus. We're so used to the idea of Jesus' sacrifice that we have forgotten just how substantial it is. It is the gift of love on the grandest scale. Right? The Bible says to us that greater love has no one than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. And yet Jesus goes a step beyond that. And he gives his life for people who are his declared enemies. People who have said to God, we don't want you in our lives. We don't want you to rule our lives. We don't want to obey you. We don't want to do what you want us to do. In fact, we'd rather nail you to a tree. And Jesus says, I love you. I'll die for you. He does. That's what love is. Love, love is not some and not some Valentine's card sugary. It's not, oh, I love you today, and then tomorrow I don't feel like it anymore. Love is love. Love that stretches out its arms. And says, I die for you. And it says that whether you're my enemy, whether you're my friend, whether you are old or young, whether you are near or far, whether you are educated or uneducated, regardless of your trade, regardless of your background, your ethnicity, regardless of your orientation, God says, I love you. I die for you. How could we not, in response to that gift, express our gratitude through good things? When we eat our turkey today, if you're going to eat turkey today, do that as an act of gratitude. Celebrate with your family and your loved ones as gratitude to Christ for all he has done. When you go out next week to the rest of your week, when you go to work, when you're, whether you're mopping the floors or changing diapers or, or tilling fields or putting stuff in your silo or, or whatever you're doing, do it as gratitude. This is the terrible thing about how Thanksgiving is often celebrated in our world, is people are encouraged to be grateful but there's often a lack of an answer to the question, to whom? To whom are you grateful? You're grateful for this bountiful food, to whom? 
to the host who provided it? Okay, that's nice. Why would we have a whole holiday for that? You could just be grateful when I invite you over for dinner. Right? Grateful to the ether, to the universe. Well, if we believe in a universe that has no God, the universe doesn't care whether we're grateful or not. Right? What are we grateful for and why are we grateful for it? To whom are we grateful? And what difference does it make? Think of this. James talks about how if someone, if someone comes up to a fellow believer or anyone else and says to them, though they are poor, though they are hungry, though they are possibly living on the street, they come up to them and say, be blessed, be well, be warm. And yet they do nothing about it other than say those words. What good is that? So, too, with gratitude. If we wander around saying, oh, I'm so grateful for all that God has given me, and we do nothing about it, what good is that? Why bother? Instead, let us savor the greatest gift, best gift divine, our Lord Jesus Christ, and let us do so by giving in return, let us pray. For yourself, best gift to divine, to the world so freely given, agent of God's grand design, peace on earth and joy in heaven. Christ our Lord, to you we raise this, our hymn of grateful praise. Lord, we thank you for blessings in the world around us and for the richness of moments and experiences. We thank you for the blessing of people. Oh, wonderful gift. But we've reserved our most heartfelt gratitude for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Words cannot fully express our, express our thanks. We love you, Lord. And all God's people say, Brothers and sisters, our offering this morning is for uh, local Crosstown Impact, right? That's correct still? Crosstown Impact? Yeah? Okay. Crosstown Impact uh, is a great organization. They are uh, a local nonprofit head by uh, jo Greg Holcroft, and they do... Uh, not only youth ministry, high school youth ministry in Brockville together with a variety of churches joining together. They also do after school programs, homework, reading programs, uh, snack stuff, and uh, give the gospel uh, during that time as well. Crosstown Impact is an absolutely incredible thing that has been going on for quite a number of years, not only in Brockville, but here in Athens at Pineview and also uh, into Prescott now, I believe, as well. Uh, so we would encourage you, if you would like to give an offering to Crosstown Impact, the offering plate is at the back of the church. Just when you leave, you can put uh, an offering in there if you'd like. Or as uh, most of you know, you can also, of course, always give via uh, e-transfer uh, or checks, uh, and you know how to do that as well. Let us, as we come close to the close of this service, come to God in closing prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the work of Crosstown Impact. We thank you so much for the work that you have called each and every one of us to do in our own way, in the time that you have given us, wherever we are and whatever we are doing. Lord, we pray that you will help us to glorify you in everything we do. We pray that you will help us, that these offerings that we bring today would be a pleasing aroma to you. And Lord, we pray that we would live lives of gratitude and thanksgiving. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll invite you to stand and sing or worship together with me 
with 10,000 reasons.